Just a usual back for decals. There's some more information on the back side. Made in Italy. I guess many of you will already know who the manufacturer is. If you watched my last two reviews on Tamiya figures, you will remember that there were a couple of mistakes with insignia and ranks that didn't match. While the officer's ranks were correct, many NCO ranks were wrong. Since the kits are very nice, I didn't mind these mistakes too much. As you'll see later, there are many annoying mistakes in the instructions again. I spent three complete days to do a PDF file with all ranks and insignia of Wehrmacht, Waffen, SS and Luftwaffe. The file consists of 8 A4 pages and also includes all colors of arms. There were many of them. All my subscribers who are interested in this file and wish to get it can PM me and leave their email address. I'll send it to you as soon as possible. But now for the decals and a couple of special, well, features for German modelers. These officer's shoulder straps can be used for infantry, but those for NCO and enlisted men are Africa Corps straps. The dunkel gap of the base makes it clear. The NCO straps should have a golden ribbon between the white infantry rim and the dunkel gap, but it's red. Maybe it isn't possible to print them in gold. Or maybe the difference between the two colors wouldn't be easy enough to tell. Here we have shoulder straps for artillery and mountain troops officers. And some color badges for Luftwaffe enlisted men. They'd be yellow for flying personnel and mechanics. I'll explain these two colors later. Africa Corps color badges and Type 1 armbands. The color badges appear to be just Dunkel Gab, so I took another pic from a slight angle that shows the details. Here you go. Quite frankly, I had to use the editing tools of my photo software to an enormous extent to make the details visible. This isn't what you could see with a naked eye. The same goes for the Type 2 armbands. The word Africa can't be read without magnifiers in a certain perspective. I don't know what to think of these two decals since I haven't tried them yet. Maybe a flat clear coat after the application will be helpful. The Luftwaffe Eagles and Africa armbands look very nice. These decals for side caps would look great if they were in register. There are 24 iron crosses on this sheet. Unfortunately, there are only two pairs of insignia for Wehrmacht officers' caps. I'll show you the gorges in a second. The shoulder straps and armaments for military field policemen are very nice. These are not in register, but the badges for the left sleeve are gorges. I can't imagine how one should be able to paint them. On the left you can see color badges for NCO and enlisted men. Those in the center are for officers. And a closer look at the gorges. Just beautiful. Like before, these shoulder straps could be used for infantry officers. These are clearly for Waffen SS men because of their black base. Then we have a couple of Waffen SS armbands. The choice isn't big, and if you are looking for a special armband, you should try Paddinghaus decals. They offer a broad variety, and I guess you'll find almost all armbands that were used. By the way, the Totenkopf armbands were removed from the sheet. I can't imagine that the skull would be identifiable at all, so there's no reason for doing this. The Waffen SS Eagles are there, but maybe it's because there are no swastikas. The same goes for the buckles of the belts. Of course the slogan can't be read either. There aren't any real letters. The left collar badges are nicely done, but the right ones are missing. Even the one for the colonel, which is identical with the left one. As you will have guessed, these decals were printed by Cartograph. The decals aren't glossy, which is very nice. They are quite thick, though. 
Most of them have a lot of carrier film around them. I never used Cartograph decals before, so I can't say if that's a usual appearance. I expected them to be much thinner with almost no carrier film. I cut them out as close as possible. If you used them before, please leave a comment and tell us about them. I guess I'm not the only one who's interested in your opinion and experiences. Thanks. And now for the instructions and the sadness that came over me. I'll just let you watch and read my remarks. Please pause if necessary. Here we see a couple of examples for the use of the decals. And again there are decals missing. A couple of words on this kind of censorship. I never built and painted a waffen SS figure. I don't know if I ever will, but that's not the point. Our hobby deals with history. The way this is handled in Germany leaves the impression that some aspects of history are denied by law. Nobody can deny that the Waffen SS existed. There's enough evidence for their existence. I doubt that this genre of the hobby would turn any modeler into a Nazi. I'm doing this since 1976, starting with aircraft kits. I can assure you that I never was a Nazi and I never will be one. That has nothing to do with this hobby. I find it most annoying that we can't use decals that will turn our models into a realistic rendition of an actual vehicle or aircraft. There are ways, but then you can't show your model or die on exhibitions in Germany and Austria without censoring them yourself. The main reason for buying these decals is clear. For most models, they're the best way to turn a nice paint job into a perfect one. I messed up too many figures with my attempts of painting the insignia and I'm fed up with it. These decals will be a great help. With regards to the thickness and carrier film I'll have to wait till after the first use. I hope some Saturn solvent will do the job. That's it for now.